to close in due time. The proceeds from the investments are expected to be used for technology enhancement, product expansion, scaling the businesses both in Indian and global markets, while serving our B2B, B2C customers in the critical areas that we work on, which is two-wheeler and three-wheeler segments, while building the brand Ampere, which is going to be very important going forward. Abdul Latif Jamil, our independent, family-owned, diversified global investor, has presence in over 30 countries, six continents, employs over 11,000 people. It's got worldwide operations in automotive and other areas. They are one of the leading Toyota distributors globally and have previously invested in global e-mobility companies. They are the third largest shareholder in U.S. electric vehicle manufacturer, Rivian, and also have invested in Joby Aviation, an aerospace company which works on cutting-edge technology. As part of this transaction, we have received very encouraging response from various financial and strategic investors over the last several months. Uh, we're grateful for the interest shown. However, we chose our partner, Abdul Latif Jamil, because of their previous experience in electric vehicle technology and strengths in automotive. We feel they bring in the right balance of the old world automotive plus the new areas of technology, i.e. the electric vehicle experience. We expect to benefit from their expertise in this sector and help us tap wider international customer base. Overall, the strategic rationale of the deal is very compelling. Greaves Cotton, i.e. Greaves Electric Mobility and Abdul Latif Jamil have formed a formidable long-term strategic partnership to take us to the next phase of growth. We are committed to working towards making clean, sustainable, affordable, mobility solutions which is accessible to a much wider market. Greaves Electric Mobility is already profitable and post this transaction at the overall level uh, GEM will have 900 crores net of existing debt and this will serve as growth capital to be used for investments as we have elaborated earlier in products and technologies, etc. With this, Greaves Electric Mobility has its own capital to fund future growth opportunities. While at the group level, Greaves Cotton's cash reserves will be used to enhance opportunities at the group level as well. We are excited to close this transaction and create value for all of our shareholders. I thank you for taking the time and I look forward to a Q&A session. Over to you. Thank you. Rupiza, we can open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on this uh, new deal, basically, and student uh, MPA. Uh, just uh, firstly, uh, I mean, we, you highlighted about uh, how you're going to use the fund, but uh, can you provide some more color on uh, basically which areas the major part of the will go into, like technology enhancement or 
or brand building model on just again just clarify or maybe give more details on that yeah i'll start and maybe the cfo can add uh, like we've said i think the critical part of this is to continue to build the products that our customer wants so definitely new products and associated technologies ie in some of the areas that will give us a competitive advantage right will be one of the area of focus scaling up of the business and expansion globally will be the second area of the business both scaling up india and internationally right for both our b2b and b2c customers manufacturing capex we continue to increase as we announced in the last time we are already now at about 20000 a month type of capacity we'll continue to monitor that and we'll continue uh, to take our capacity up to the desired 1 million units at ranipet as and when the market demand picks picks up and ahead of that demand we will be ready money will go there brand building of brand ampere we recognize that that's an area that's very important as we bring an as we want to build an aspirational ampere brand going forward that will be another critical area so those will be the four major buckets uh, dalpat you want to add yeah so ashutosh in addition to what nagesh mentioned so major part will go into new product development technology and there will also be some part which will go for making in organic partnerships to bring some of the tech capability and enhance the two wheeler and three wheeler uh, products that we have okay and uh, we also will look to uh, make some of the outsourced parts in in house will that also be the approach or that will be not the case that's correct ashutosh as part of the manufacturing capacity enhancement some of the critical components that we have talked about in the past the capacity will be built in to bring them in house but we are not going to go for everything under one roof our approach will be building on strategic partnerships with the guys who have better capabilities on the component component ecosystem some of the critical ones we will bring them in house in our manufacturing capacity and i uh, see uh, we mentioned that almost 900 crores in net cash uh, in b electric mobility after this after the being of the dead so that's a substantial amount uh, from if you look at in for one la, next one year to year perspective considering what we have spent so far uh, in this business over last two three years so will we really need to uh, raise that another 70 million that in the second phase uh, in next one year is that a possible uh, or, or that that option is open beyond one year as well so ashutosh abdul latif jamil is very clear on supporting this business for long term and as we have seen from their other investments they are long term partners who want to take business for a longer growth right now what we have talked about is the 70 million which is an option available to grid electric mobility and there there is a pre agreed valuation formula beyond that it will be worked basis the fair market valuation at that point in time so from capital point of view you are right considering grid electric mobility is already profitable the capital that is being raised and also the reserve pool that we have will be used for the next phase of expansion and the growth and if there is a requirement beyond one year it will be on the fair market valuation at that point in time and all options will be and open at that time on table which will be decided by the board along with the investor in the company and lastly uh, obviously they bring the money on table but apart from that uh, will they also have uh, more like a, a role on the board as well of this electric mobility or what other things that bring on table apart from the money in terms of partnership yeah, i'll take that i'll take that ashutosh <coughs> right so clearly they yes they will have uh, as a partner they will be present on the board right and um, what they bring obviously is an experienced partner with uh, with diversified experience in geographies and in different sectors right there have been early stage backers of companies like caribbean and others right so they've seen this cycle they have access to technology startups they have a very close association with mit labs right and they are have a long association with toyota motors they have been distributors globally for over 65 years 
and they have either distribution opportunities or contract manufacturing opportunities present in 30 different countries, six different continents. That is kind of where the synergies come in uh, because they complement us in some of the other areas non-India and they can bring some of this technology enablers, country, international country access, right? The knowledge curve of scaling up an EV company. So in future, if you want to explore overseas opportunities, export, they could be uh, uh, helpful over there, right? Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. They have deep uh, expertise globally in about 30 countries. Okay. okay, thank you and all the best. That's also my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vimal Goel from Union Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to Team uh, Greaves Electric on, on this deal. Uh, so my first question is, could you highlight the basis of uh, the valuation on how exactly was this valuation decided? in terms of you know the uh, the stake that we have parted uh, uh, it, it, have we have did we make any uh, volume assumptions etc profitability if you can give us some detail on that so vimal the entire process was run through a well reputed investment banker and a lot of interest was there as nagesh mentioned earlier so the valuation was determined through the competitive process and then when the board decided it took into account the other strategic factors when the offers were and the offers were evaluated the investor did the valuation this is their own parameter. business plan was submitted by the company and as you know company has been having a strong growth in fy 22 it grew by 197 percent so that growth we return profitability, all those factors were taken into And then right. on the for some people, the board decided. Now, if you go by the valuation revenue, it works out to more than six and a half times on a post money valuation of the current round, that is 150 million on the trailing revenue. Right, right. Uh, sir, uh, uh, the second question would be, uh, while uh, Nagesh sir did highlight on on what what exactly does the uh, uh, does the new investor bring in, could you be a bit more uh, uh, give us more specifics in terms of technology as to uh, you know what uh, in terms of electric two wheelers, what exact which technology are we actually looking for in uh, from uh, from this investor uh, because. Uh, at this point in time, our focus is really on city bikes. And uh, will this uh, will this transition help in technology? So, is there it would be, would it be fair to assume that if we are talking of technology from an external investor, we are now moving towards more premium scooters or anything anything like that? So, if you could be more specific in terms of technology aspect, I have one more question after. That. So uh, let me just uh, tell you, I think the relationship is just a couple of days old, right? So there are several opportunities and that's what excites us. At the end of the day, the technology is moving globally at a very fast pace in this industry, right? I totally agree with you that we are in the two-wheeler and by the way, we are also into the three-wheeler. We are, we move people and we move cargo, right? So when you look at technology, whether it is in the areas of battery, chemistry, battery management systems, uh, controllers, software, I think a lot of that is being developed globally and evolved very, at a very rapid rate. Access to universities, access to startups, access to these technologies is kind of what we're looking at. That is immaterial of whether it is a four-wheeler, three-wheeler, or a two-wheeler, right? And uh, please give us some time as we evolve this partnership, I think you will see some of those benefits come out, right? Uh, but uh, uh, clearly, a strong uh, focus on technology modes will be one of the key strengths of this partnership and how to differentiate business technology. Got it, got it, sir. Uh, sir, one more point, one more question that I had was in terms of uh, 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 you know the pivot that we'll take. 
I think uh, one one area where we have re- done really well is to sort of be prudent with our capital, still grow, and uh, then also report uh, uh, and also take a good cognizance of profitability in a very tough environment. Uh, that is where I think Greaves has been pro- uh, has been very very good at, especially with uh, with uh, with our electric mobility division. Uh, with so much of capital now at access, uh, will the pivot really change? Will our will our pri- will, will our priorities change significantly to market share as against uh, uh, profitability? Uh, if, if at all, uh, do we have a market share number in in mind now? So I'm I'm glad you asked this question. Like you said, Greaves has always been uh, about profitable growth. So our mantra of how to grow the business capturing the early mover advantage. We were one of the earliest movers, right, into this sector in India and building on and moving from point to point, right? That will not change. Focusing on profitable growth will not change. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think this addition of uh, significant capital gives us gives the team a lot of flexibility. When you look at in terms of products, technology, m and opportunities, when you look at brand building and marketing, it gives us more. But please be assured that the team will be as frugal. And that's one of the things that we really like about our partner too. We think alike in that aspect. So the idea is we are going to be doing more of the same, but now with a lot more capital, which is going to be deployed in a lot of the other areas, like brand building, like technology, like m and which we probably were not able to do before. Would it be fair to say, sir, that uh, I don't think you'll be taking your eye off your uh, bit, uh, your profitability targets? Yes. That that remains unchanged. F- fair enough. Fair enough, sir. Got your point. Thank you so much, sir. I'll fall back in the queue. And Thank all you. the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Shah from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So I have two questions. Uh, so first question is on on the valuation that has been ascribed. Uh, is it possible to indicate how uh, yourself and uh, Abdul uh, Jamil Group have viewed uh, your various product offerings, be it NPR, be it low speed two wheelers, be it three wheelers, uh, where they are seeing a potential growth opportunity uh, more? Because, and would it be right to assume that in the overall scheme of things, a large part of valuation has tilted towards Ampere brand and slightly lower to the other brand? That would be the right way of looking at it? So I'll start from a strategic aspect and the CFO can add any financial comments, right? So when you look at it, right, this is a strategic long-term play, right? And then when you look at the investor, they've also always believed in long-term capital, getting in early stage and moving it in terms of, and the significant value creation, right? So that's kind of where the focus is. And when you look at the target opportunities for sustainable mobility in India and what we call the emerging markets or the global south, there is a lot of opportunities that emerge in this segment, which is all about moving people, moving cargo, which is about B2B and B2C. I think we are one of the few companies that straddles both of us. We are no longer just a two-wheeler brand. We are a two-wheeler plus three-wheeler. The potential is enormous, right? We are at the bottom of the pyramid in India with the e-rickshaw market, which continues to grow. We are in the Ampere two-wheeler, which is obviously the two-wheeler and the significant growth market and the potential for future growth is significant. Then we're also into the three-wheeler auto segment, right? So when you look at the overall opportunity of moving people and moving cargo, plus like the previous gentleman rightly pointed out, our mindset of not only growing the company, but also growing the company with the right uh, profit or right profitable growth mindset, I think is very important, right? And also the long-term thinking in terms of how to grow this business, the alignment of the vision. I think all of these were very, very important as to how the teams got together and felt this was a very significant combination that could help. And each party complements the other. That's kind of how it was on a strategic rational standpoint. I will uh, ask Dalpatu 
comment if he has any additional comments. Yeah, so Chiraj, in addition to what Nagesh said, if you look at our overall revenue size, two-wheeler has a higher share today. So in the overall valuation, definitely two-wheeler gets a higher weightage. But at the same time, the partner is equally excited about the three-wheeler and the potential that three-wheelers and the electric three-wheelers, particularly in India and the global south, the opportunities which exist. So they took all those factors into consideration. And that's how they arrived at their final offer, uh, which were negotiated and then revised. And the second question is also follow up on the earlier participant's question is that uh, your between profitability and volume, you know, volume ramp up, why you are struggling so struggling so much in so much profitability? profitability? Now, especially with the kind of uh, cash balance, cash that you have generated or uh, you have got because of the deal. Why not try to uh, move, uh, find a find a much better balance between volume because it's an early bird game, especially if you have a good product. It's an early bird game. It helps you to create brand. So uh, will there be some thought or some compromise between the two, and you will more you will be more moving towards more volumes as compared to the the profitability that you generally had as a focus area. Uh, yeah, you want me to that? Yeah. So I think the thought process is very, very simple. At the end of the day, are we committed to growing the business as a leader in this field? I think the answer is yes. Are we committed to doing the right way in terms of growing the business with the right uh, uh, level of uh, financial prudence, right, which takes care of our stakeholders? Answer is absolutely yes. So we are not going to leave the opportunity at the table. We are going to go after every opportunity. That's why I said two-wheeler plus three-wheeler, B2B and B2C. Bringing in the products from time to time, bringing in newer products, faster introduction to markets, right? All of that will continue to happen. And you're going to see us being aggressive in all of that aspect, right? And uh, with the brand building activities that will happen under Sanjay's leadership, I think you're going to see uh, that aspect also being taken care of, which probably in the past we have uh, not been able to do as much. So, so when you look at all of the above, I think we are, again, this is a marathon. We are looking at it as a five-day test match series and not a 2020. And we want to make sure that we are putting in the fundamental blocks of people. We have some of the best talent in the industry. Manufacturing. CapEx, right? uh, engineering technology, partnerships, supply chain, right? All of that, I think, is what we are working on, right? To kind of get to the point where we can get to our logical market share, right? So uh, make no mistake about it. I think the focus will be on growth. The focus will also be on profits. So I think we will try to manage both. So, so if I can ask it slightly the other way, if I have to take a say, two to three year view or a three to four year view, out of the hundred rupee, where would you think your alloc how the allocation would be spread for Greaves uh, mobility business in terms of product development, in terms of brand building, in terms of investing to scale up volumes? So if uh, and any other parameters that you think uh, that of the hundred rupee wallet, if you have. How do you think the allocation would play out for us? It would, uh, if, if you can share some light, it would be helpful. It is because inside on how you think about the business today over next three to five years. Yeah. So Chirag, let me start on this. So like Nagesh mentioned in the opening remarks, and those purposes were also in the order of priority. The largest yeah. part of this wallet will go for new technologies, newer product development and announcing the current uh, product experience for our customers. The second part will go in increasing the manufacturing capacities, bringing in some of the critical components in-house. And third component, which is part of the subset of the first two, to also get into some of the strategic tie-ups, right? Look at some of the organic opportunities. So these are going to be the top three buckets and then followed by the distribution and brand building side. 
to increase the brand awareness of Ampere, Ali, and other brands that GMPL Group is going to have for future. That's going to be the order in the utilization of capital for the company. Uh, this is really excellent. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Sure. The next question is from the line of Jen from Sri Sampanna Intelligent Assets. Please go ahead. Mr. Jen, please go ahead with your question. Your line is unmuted. May we request you to unmute yourself if muted from your handset, Mr. Jen? Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, congratulations to the Greaves team. So my question is that uh, we have uh, got the investments which was uh, discussed in the previous connects and the uh, company has always guided on the future prospectus. So would like to understand what could be the vision we have for next two, three years on the business model and what kind of new products, uh, product launches we are looking at. Because if I see uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler is one market, then possibly we can also look at market of uh, having products which are uh, to be used within a society, like a, uh, you can say polo, uh, polo cab or something like that. So any uh, new developments on these lines are also available. Please let us know. Yeah, so I uh, thank you. Uh, as you know, over the next three to five years, we have an internal business plan and we are working towards that, which is to build significant leadership in the sector. And like you rightfully said, both in the two-wheeler and three-wheeler, B2B and B2C, I keep on stressing this because I think one of the strengths that we have is to look at application-specific engineered vehicles for B2B applications, right? So you're going to see us focus on both B2B and B2C customer, the retail consumer, right? And when you talk about products, you're going to see us focused on bringing out a couple of new products in terms of the ones that get into the higher speed, higher performance on the two-wheeler side, right? as well as uh, newer designs. Uh, the details, I will announce it as we get closer to it, but rest assured, I think the team is focused on working on new products for the two-wheeler and obviously the electric three-wheeler, right? So those are the areas of focus. And in addition to that, bringing in the right technology and the right quality and the right partners, uh, supply chain partners globally, right? So that's kind of where our focus will be. As we get closer to the product launches, I mean, as you've seen, hopefully over the last three years, we have introduced multiple products at the right time. I think this is an industry that's going to be led by products, and uh, you're going to see us focus more on the products. While I think a fundamental mantra was very clear when we went into this, we said the heart of the market, where the customer is, the belly of the market is that 80, 85,000 rupees, right? So. Fundamentally, you'll see us, that's where our focus will be. Obviously, to premium models or higher speed and higher version, will there be a little more enhancements in terms of features and products? The answer is going to be yes, it's under investigation. But focusing on truly understanding the Indian consumer, delivering the Indian consumer what they want, and over a period of time, getting to global consumers will be the high-level vision. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on the deal. Uh, just wanted to understand, right, like, I mean, till now your approach has been extremely frugal and uh, it's commendable to what level you've reached uh, taking that approach. So just uh, given this, the quantum of the capital raise and the uh, significant dilution, I mean, like potentially if you die, I, I would guess that if you take the other 70 million as well, uh, you will your share I mean at least uh, Greece cotton shareholding in the subsidiary would sort of come closer to 50 51 percent uh, so just trying to understand that the the just the quantum of the capital raise uh, I mean could you sort of uh, I mean I, I know you've spent uh, you've talked about the areas that where you where you're looking to spend and uh, but uh, I mean like uh, could you just talk about, I mean, why uh, this level of a capital raise? I mean, like. 
So I'll start. Uh, I think at the end of the day, keep in mind uh, the opportunity pie. Let me start with the opportunity pie, right? India, even uh, pre-COVID, was obviously at 20 million two-wheeler market. Post-COVID, obviously, it's gone down significantly, right? But moving people and moving cargo in India is not going to go away, right? Moving it at the right value proposition or the right TCO, I think, is going to be the name of the game. We believe the unit economics are there and the ambition of where this can significantly scale up over the next five years, I think is tremendous. It's, we believe it's an opportunity of a lifetime right here in India. In addition to that, when you look at the international markets, especially the ones in uh, like-minded countries, right, in Asia, Africa, Middle East, I think there's a tremendous opportunity there as well. Add to that the B2B opportunities, which, is, which needs application-specific products, right? Which we will, when you look at all of the bow, I think there's a huge opportunity. So our hunger, yeah, thank you very much for recognizing the frugalness, and we believe that's kind of how we wanted to make sure that every single day we are monitoring that, but not also giving up the opportunity on the table. So you're gonna find us hungry in terms of watching the marketplace, watching the opportunities, watching the different segmentation, whether it is in the B retail consumer space or it's in the B2B space, in the two-wheeler or in the three-wheeler space, right? We believe there is an opportunity. So our thought process here was, and keep in mind, it's only the 150 at the 35 percent state, right? That's kind of what is diluted right now, just to clarify your question, right? Our intent right now is to use this as growth capital and focus it on areas, build significant technology modes in terms of what could be a huge differentiator over a period of time. I think so that's kind of where we are and that is where you're going to see us, our focus over the next 24 to 36 months. And the idea is to do it once, like Dalpat was saying, we ran a process Global investors looked at it, right? It was both financial strategic. We went through uh, almost like a over six months process. And the intent now is to do it once, to get the money, get that uh, quote unquote war chest ready, and now focus on the consumer, focus on the markets, focus on the business, and allow our teams to give them the flexibility to succeed, go out and win. And we believe that this could be a great opportunity. Hence the reason for and Sonal, I would like to add two more points to what Nagesh mentioned. One, this $150 million are identified as the total business plan requirement. $70 million is the reserve pool available at the option of GNPL. There is no obligation. And the valuation parameters for that are determined, taking post-money valuation of the current round as the pre-money valuation of the next whenever if that money is called by GNPL and it's required by them with the adjustment for time value of money and the business growth. So to that extent, the valuation that you indicated would not be the case. At any point in time, GMP or GCL will remain with significant control of uh, GMP. Got it. And, and uh, I mean, I, to be, I, I do understand that the, given that the opportunity and uh, the uh, and like you mentioned the size of the opportunity and clearly the business is at an inflection point so this is coming in just at the right time so do we see in that sense that uh, your plans were are already in place and we will see a significant step up in execution over the next uh, six uh, 12 months to 18 months is that the way to look at it yes i think so too yes yeah. mm -hmm. And in fact, that's the whole idea, Sonal, where step by step, company has what is that uh, we have been talking or we have executed. So, be it beating up the leadership team, beating up the teams at the GMP level, bringing the business to a particular size, level of profitability, and now getting the right partner with the right resources and capital resources for the company so that it can expedite and accelerate the execution plan on what we have looked as a reason for this particular company. Got it, got it, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghunandan NL from MK Global, please go ahead. Uh, 
thank you for the opportunity congratulations to the team uh, two questions uh, firstly company is stepping up investments on new products and the e2 wheeler three wheeler penetration industry estimates are aggressive as stated in your presentation how do you expect the demand to pan out for uh, fixed swappable technologies b2b private segment low speed high speed categories in which technologies or product segments uh, would you uh, target uh, more of investments so clearly uh, the demand is there when you look at the retail let me take it one by one two wheeler and three wheeler right the retail consumer especially on the two wheeler side i think because of the unit economics i touched upon before i think and the petrol price is going up i think clearly the delta or the differential is more attractive and clearly we see the demand right so in terms of uh, opportunities in the retail consumer yes when you look at on the b2b side when you look at ride sharing uh, uh cargo delivery and the big basket type of companies the amazon type of companies there's a lot of opportunity there right so when i look at it i think the demand is uh strong and we continue to see strong demand we continue to see a lot of strong interest at our dealership level right one caveat our supply chain continues to be a challenge globally it is not not just for us so in fact if there is one area we are watching very carefully and building deeper relationship with suppliers going global making sure that we are talking to the chip makers globally right those are the things that you're going to see us do more as well right so that's kind of where i see i see demand continuing to grow in the area of two wheeler three wheeler b2b b2c and uh, in india first and then i also see good opportunities in certain parts of the world thank you thank you uh, my second question uh, how are you looking at the competition scenario uh, considering a few of the peers have pli benefits would that put them at an advantage over others how would you try and differentiate from larger peers well i i personally would not like to comment on competition but one thing to know is whenever there is we are probably in the middle of the best longest technology disruption that mankind has ever seen the mobility as we know it will change the very fact that uh companies old and new are coming together moving more towards more technology more connected more data i think you're going to see a confluence of events that happen from a technology and from data distribution models are going to change business models are going to change some of this we were fortunate enough we've been trying them out keep in mind ampere is a 13 year old company right we've been at it for the last 4 years and we continue to learn so we believe and you can take examples world over whether it is in the west or even in china and look at kind of the, how the competition was and how the competition evolved in the two wheeler electric industry you can do your own homework and you can see so opportunities like this are an opportunity of a lifetime because the it's an opportunity for new people to be sitting at the table irrespective of size irrespective of reach it's the vision it's the technology it's the products it's understanding of the consumer that matters and i think that's kind of what we are going to be focused thank you uh, thank you sir uh, wishing you all the best one last question uh, Uh, over the medium to long term how would you see your aspirational uh, market share in two wheeler and three wheeler that's all from my side so clearly uh, like i said before we are going to be hungry we see the opportunity as the opportunity evolves we have a significant internal goal at the right time we'll come back and talk about it but one way and uh, with our teams both with sanjay coming in and uh, absolutely with the partner now coming in we will be looking at uh, our business plan over the next 90 to 180 days so i will probably address that maybe in 180 days but enough to say that i think we saw this opportunity earlier we have moved faster 
we have done what it takes and will continue continue to, to see that so just watch our actions in the last 36 months and then you will probably get an answer for the next 36 months i'll leave it at that thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of jyoti singh from adi and capital markets please go ahead Jyoti Singh, please go ahead with your question. Your line is unmuted. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, but my question already been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronak Sarda from Systematics. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks and congratulations uh, on, on this deal. Uh, a, a few questions. Uh, one, uh, you alluded to the supply chain constraint. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, can you help us uh, understand uh, uh, how does this tie-up help us on uh, on the battery supply, uh, the quality of cell, and also what are the changes expected uh, uh, post the recent you know fire fire issues uh, on, on the overall electric two wheelers. So uh, a mixed question, but one, what are the changes? And second, how does this tie up help us uh, close uh, on the battery supply especially? Yeah, so I think our technology team led by our global CTO, I think will con continues to focus on what's right, uh, focusing not just on the cell quality, which is obviously one of the key things, like you rightfully said, plus the battery pack design, plus the PMS, and a host of other things, right? So I think the uh, Ampere has been around for 13 plus years, and the goal is obviously to keep working with India duty cycle conditions and making sure that we have a product, right? So I think you're gonna see continued focus on technology and safety, which is paramount importance to us. Coming to the supply chain, clearly our supply chain team, and this is where we have brought in strengths from the grief side. So clearly while Ampere is a startup, we have brought in key strengths on supply chain and manufacturing, scaling up from the grief side, where grief was good at. And our teams are working with strategic partners, uh, supplier partners, and like Dalpat said earlier, we always look at both make and buy. And as the volumes increases, some of that will evolve, but we have strategic partners. And in some cases, even though, as we all know, lithium cells and chips come from outside, the battery pack design and the battery packs come from India, right? So the, our teams are in touch with our partners both here, and in some cases working with the original source, wherever that original source is, to ensure that we uh, get not only the quantity, but also the right quality, looking ahead one to two quarters ahead, right? So I think that's kind of will be the focus of a very experienced supply chain team that we have. And over a period of time, we'll continue to do that and, uh, and also evaluate what is right, uh, right to be done along with the partner, what is right to be done internal from a scaling up or from a quality perspective. So all of that introspection keeps happening from time to time. And I think you're gonna to continue to see that. Um, okay, sure. Uh, the second question was, you know, I mean, um, looking at the medium term, how do you, uh, given there are very few electric to pure, uh, pure electric two wheelers, uh, you know, uh, uh, not burning, you know, uh, cash. So how do you see the scenario changing, let's say, once the fame to subsidy uh, ends? I mean, uh, what are the scenarios are we working with? Uh, does the subsidy go away entirely given PLI? uh you know scheme so comes into play uh and if that happens how does the industry change do you see a significant uh volume pressure uh due to that or do you see uh or is there any other scenario which can you know indicate uh so you're i think you're talking about post subsidy regime yeah so yeah, clearly the same uh, yeah, yeah, understood. So clearly the PM2, we all know uh, up to what time the government uh, uh, has allowed that, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of clear. But our goal is always to be looking at our designs, our technology, looking at uh, uh, kind of how we can make it more efficient from a 
frugalness, right, in terms of uh, optimizing cost, I would say, or uh, we have an internal program for Propel, right? That's one. Parallelly, scale helps in automotive. So as the number of units improve, obviously the scale efficiencies kick in, right? And that is another area. And thirdly, as you've pr probably seen, we are not uh, averse to taking price increases as and when the uh, need arises. Our average ASP, you can look at it, has grown significantly over the last uh, year and a half, right? Average selling price. So we will do look at all of the th three options I just described, right? All right? And uh, keep watching the bottom line as well as keep looking at market share and looking at the volume. So I think with this is where focus on technology, focus on products, focus on a strategic supplier system that are strategic to us is very, very important. So building the long-term, what I call technology and supply chain modes, I think will be critical. So that's kind of what we are working towards to get ourselves ready as and when that need arises. Sure. And a final question, I mean, given the quantum of KP, uh, the capital raise, uh, are there plans to enter the four-wheeler uh, space as well, whether it's on the commercial side or on the passenger vehicle side? Uh, no plans as of now. Sure. Okay. So the, the funding is dedicated to the electric two and three-wheeler. Two and three-wheeler, yes. Okay. Sure. Thank you and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Ingrid Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, congrats for the fund. Two questions. First one is, uh, what's the exit plan for the new investor and what's the timeline you guys have signed as part of the deal? So Pramod, uh, some of the details are confidential and we are bound by the confidentiality under the agreement. Having said that, from the overall investment deal perspective, it is an equity deal, and both the investors or the basically investors are going to carry the pure equity risk in this particular part. There are customary processes of exit, which will be done on the best effort basis. But uh, if you are pushing it, there are no specific obligations taken by either the company or the promoter. Second one is with regard to the uh, the way the structuring of the deal has uh, and the questions are surrounded with the extent of dilution. Uh, so if I had to ask you, uh, usually the industry phenomena in these startups is people go through uh, different series of funding to discover the valuation. Uh, whereas in your case, it looks like uh, you have taken uh, one big jump into it. Uh, wanted to know what's the thought process, why not to discover the value as you go forward, one. Because as you clearly alluded, it's a more test match and uh, there will be more positive negative surprise which may come in. Uh, that's one. Second, uh, considering the you are one of the relatively amounts of startups have been well funded uh, with the support of the parent and the way the products are performing. Was there a need to go for uh, this big jump was also with the fact that you expect some shakeout to happen might be 12 months, 18 months down the line in the industry and hence you want to be fully uh, prepared for it? We elaborated on it earlier. On the last part, we are not a startup as a, a group. The company, Green Cotton, has been there, and uh, as a company, we have always been focused on profitability and making sure that business runs as per what it is required. From capital raise point of view, as you know, the opportunity is very big, be it in the two-wheelers and the three-wheelers. We wanted to go for one, have the required resources, so that the management can continue to focus on business and driving the growth that we have planned. Sure. Thanks Thank you. The next question is from the line of Faisal Hava from SG Hava and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, can you, uh, so uh, sir, uh, with Sola and even Acer, you know, really leading the charge and, you know, we have uh, kind of, you know, captured the imagination as startups amongst the buying uh, population or public. Uh, so we still, you know, the image of our, uh, you know, scooter as well as the corporate is of, 
you know, like an old world company. And you know, so we have uh, lost some kind of a discourse uh, there itself. How how do you want to you know correct that? And secondly, uh, you know, uh, the 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 private equity investor uh, that you have got on board has also invested uh, in Rivian, which is more into truck manufacturing. So uh, we feel that uh, it could also lead to more synergies there, and you know we get into that um, where also there is a huge use, use case uh, uh, argument for it also. So uh, I think there were a couple of questions there. I'll start. Uh, uh, first of all, I think we have a strategic investor, not a private equity, right? Uh, so Abdul Latif Jamil is going to be a very strategic long-term investor, right? And then the second thing is, uh, I'm so uh, I don't want to talk about competition, but at the end of the day, you have seen a performance. I think the 21 versus 22, the performance uh, of volume went from 129 percent, I believe it was 27,000 to 62,000, right? Uh, quarterly uh, results, 237 crores, and positive PBT and positive EBITDA. So if it is this, uh, we are not in the business of likes. We are not in the business of, we are in the business of adding significant shareholder value and taking care of our customers. And I think that will be our focus by doing the product right, the technology right, and getting the customer what the customer wants. No, no, sir, sir, I was not talking more in terms of number. I was talking in terms of the branding. Because, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the branding I, 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 I am totally, I am totally with you that on numbers there can be hardly any company in electric vehicles, which is electric scooters at least, you know, which is better than us. So you know, the branding itself, you know, is a little, you know, uh, I mean, old world or you know, something like that, you know, which is very, uh, it's a very soggy branding. Okay, uh, I was going to come to the branding. Thanks for that. I was going to come to the branding next. As I said earlier on, one of the areas where the money is going to be used is to build brand ampere. We clearly want to build an aspirational brand ampere, right? And uh, the uh, early indicators you saw, uh, and if you've not seen that, I would welcome you to see our ampere experience center, right? Some of our new dealerships that are coming on, where we are headed, and. Uh, the reason for bringing in Sanjay, who's got a significant experience in this, is exactly also in in this area, in terms of the branding, in terms of digitization data, right? So you're going to see us get into some of that, and that's one of the areas the money will be utilized as well. And about the trust that you have some uh, uh, views? About, the, like I said, right now our focus is to wheeler and three-wheeler. Uh, if anything changes, we'll talk about it at the right time. And sir, uh, uh, this, we have a two and a half lakh, two lakh fifty thousand kind of a uh, uh, manufacturing capacity which is almost ready and built up. You feel that in 22, 23, we could, uh, you know, fulfill that uh, target? So again, like I said, I think uh, uh, April and May, when I look at the numbers, uh, interesting trend. I think the volume numbers are shown in the charts. I think we are seeing the demand. Uh, we're just watching the supply chain and how to manage the supply chain. But uh, yes, we, the things within our control, manufacturing capacity, talent, production, products, I think we got all of that under control. The things we don't control, global supply chain, is the only one that I'm not going to be able to answer directly your question. That will be the determination for whether we get it to 20,000 a month or not, right? So, but stay tuned. I think as we go through these calls every quarter every uh, we will be updating you from time to time you mean there is a fair chance that we may be able to reach it or at least we, we may be able to reach a 20000 run rate in, in four to five months of good day well like i said we have done everything within our control to be ready for that opportunity right let the supply chain thing pan out and then we will determine what the final numbers are but anything within our control we are already ready and what is your sense, sir, that the, uh, the electric scooters coming up could could actually expand this two crore uh, two wheeler market also? Because it, even if so far we are even, we are only talking of replacing the two wheeler, but it could actually you know expand it to uh, people who cannot afford the petrol or the diesel, you know? No, no, I think uh, absolutely. I think that's a good point because when you look at it, the market will expand both at the higher end uh, or the and at the lower end. And the reason I say that is India is a relatively a young country. There are a lot of people, lots and lots and lots of people who turn 18 every month, right? And uh, they need affordable mobility solutions, right? 
So I think that's the beauty of kind of our vision, our strategy, where we are in the two-wheeler at the lower end, we are in the two-wheeler at the medium to uh, value plus range, right? And over a period of time, we are also obviously going into additional new products. Plus, we are into the three-wheeler, right? At the very low end and at the medium end. So when you look at it, right? I think we play in the belly of the market. And the market will itself, when you look at it, will expand will expand. And keep in mind, there will be the B2C customer and the B2B customer with distinctive needs. So yes, we do expa expect the market to expand over a period of time. Uh, may I thank you for answering my question so well? Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basan Hali for closing comments. Uh, thank you all for joining us on the call. Thank you for your time and attention and your interest. We at Greaves Electric Mobility continue to keep working, to continue to keep adding shareholder value. And the, this announcement is one of the series of several initiatives over the last 18 months. So thank you for your interest. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Graves Cotton Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.